What's up everyone, welcome to Ben's Car Reviews. I'm Ben and today we'll be dissecting the 2025 Hyundai Santa Cruz. Let's get right into it with the chart. A nice lineup of five trims here from Hyundai for the Santa Cruz, ranging from the SE, 20,500 all the way to that limited at 42.5. So for $14,000 separates these starting out with the MSRPs. So pretty good range here to separate five trims. Hopefully that allows you to find your way behind the wheel of one. Engine options, what do we got? The SE, SEL, SEL activity will have a 2.5 liter inline four, 191 horsepower, 181 pound feet of torque. Opting for those top two trims will get you a turbocharged version of that, which delivers significantly more power. 281 horsepower, 311 pound-feet of torque. That is a big number. This thing can actually move pretty well. Transmissions, we have an 8-speed auto or an 8-speed DCT. Front-wheel drive is standard on those first three trims, but you can get in all-wheel drive as an option. And all-wheel drive is standard on those top two trims, which is great to see. MPGs aren't stellar for a four-cylinder vehicle, in my opinion. Uh, yes, this is a compact truck, but it's still not very big, doesn't weigh too much, but in the end here, these numbers are pretty good. Real quick guys, here at Ben's Car Reviews, there's no fluff, we keep it under 10 minutes. If that's something that's intriguing to you and you like this content as you watch, please like and subscribe, and I'll continue to go to the channel. Let's keep going. The Santa Cruz is one of my favorite vehicles on the road these days. It's very unique and pushes the envelope of design. And when it comes to compact trucks, it's one of your two options to choose from. I think Hyundai has set this up well to beat the Maverick. One of my favorite things right off the bat with the Santa Cruz lineup are the light features. Not only do I happen to think the design is well done, although unorthodox, uh, but they're powered by LEDs all around on every trim. Their standard projector by LEDs, LED day day daytime running lights, LED cargo lights, LED bed lights, and high beam assist, again on all trims. XRT Limited will have dark chrome front and rear bumper trim. The XRT will have an exclusive dark satin black grille and red front tow hooks. The Limited will have a dark chrome accent grille. The first three trims will be getting 18 inch wheels. The XRT will be getting 18s as well, but will be XRT specific. The Limited will be getting larger 20 inch wheels uh, with a great design on those. I think they're all designed well, uh, Hyundai's really only showing the limited though on their website um, as far as when you can look at the separate trims so keep an eye out for when those are fully out. Tires will be a 245 width all around with a 50 series sidewall standard but the XRT will have a bit more beef with a 60 sidewall. Also a spare is standard so we'll hoot at that. Door handles will be satin black standard but the limited will have body colored. The XRT and limited will have dark chrome tailgate handle. Side mirrors will be body colored standard. The XRT will have them in satin black. All but the base SE will have heated and have a blinker incorporated also. The XRT will have XRT exclusive fender flares. All but the SE have standard roof side rails. A self leveling suspension in the rear is standard. The XRT has a tow drive mode and has an increased approach angle towing capacity maxes out at 5,000 pounds, which is actually quite impressive. Non-turbo trims will have 3,500 pound capacity. The 52 inch by 54 inch sheet molded composite bed of the Santa Cruz was well thought out. It has a sealed underfloor bin that drains, an available 115 volt power outlet, place boards and molded pockets to customize and expand bed storage, a standard lockable under bed storage compartment, sidewall bed storage compartments, heavy duty cargo D rings, top three trims have a dual C channel adjustable utility track rail and cleat system, and a lockable tonneau cover to protect up to 27 cubic feet of cargo. That's standard on the top three trims. Now there's a lot to take in. In the end, just know this bed was well thought out, has a lot going on. There's standard integrated rear bumper steps on these, there's a standard multifunctional tailgate and remote release. The Santa Cruz measures in at 195.7 inches long, 75 inches wide, 66.7 inches tall, and weighs at most 4,237 pounds. There's a 10-year, 100,000-mile powertrain warranty, 
and a five-year, 60,000-mile new vehicle warranty. When it comes to a best bang for your buck, I think the SEL will take the cake. For the slightly more money over the SE, you're going to get a couple creature comforts that I think are worth the upgrade on the interior, which we'll see next. But beyond that, it's 12,000 more than the base to get that turbocharged engine. Yes, that would be great to have, but in my eyes, not worth 12,000. Let's get into that interior now. A very attractive and clean interior design here in the Santa Cruz. I think Hyundai is continuing to do some of the best interior designs, and yes, resembles everything else out there, but they do it in a way that gives a futuristic feel and like a lot for your money, which I think is very important to a buyer. A 12.3 inch infotainment touchscreen is the standard setup. And I love when all trims get the same screen size. Wireless Apple CarPlay Android Auto capability. The SE and SEL will have a 4.2 inch driver's info area. The top three trims will have a significantly larger 12.3 inch digital gauge display. Once again, 12.3 inch screens seems to be what everybody's doing right now. And you can have dual setup there if you go high enough. The top three trims will have a standard wireless charger. The Limited has a Bose premium audio system. Only the Limited will have a heated steering wheel, which I'm definitely surprised the XRT isn't getting that standard as well. The XRT and Limited have a leather wrapped steering wheel and shift knob. The SEL Activity and Limited will have the power sunroof standard. Dual USB ports in the front and second rows are standard. The Limited will have standard ambient interior lighting, which is 64 color around the upper center console and front door pockets. I'll put the SE will have standard dual automatic temperature controls with auto defogger. Definitely a bummer that the SE was cheaped out of dual automatic climate control. Hard, tough to see. The SE is going to have cloth seats. SEL and SEL activity will have h tex leatherette. XRT will have black h tex And the Limited will have a leather. The SE will have six-way adjustable driver's seat the rest have 8-way power. All but the SE have power driver's lumbar support and heated front seats. The limited tax on ventilated fronts as well. Hyundai Smart Sense will provide you some driver's assist, safety and technology features, and as always, more the higher you buy. Overall, I think Hyundai did pretty fair with the optioning out of these trims. I wish a couple of those limited standard features had trickled down to at least the XRT, but it is what it is. Bottom trims still get good enough stuff for sure. Interview guys, if you're in the market for a compact truck, you don't want to get a midsize because a midsize is now a full size and costs a ton of money. Maybe you want something that feels like an SUV but occasionally have to haul something in the bed. Um, so you really don't need a truck, but you need a truck capability at times. The Santa Cruz might be the sweet spot for you. The other option really is the Ford Maverick in this size range as of now. I think this compact truck market um, is really missing some competitors. Toyota, waiting on them to see if they will do something. Uh, but Ram, potentially even. I mean, there's other truck brands out here that I think are missing an opportunity. But if the Santa Cruz is what you want to go with, I think you're making a great call. I love the design. I think this is a very um, dual functioning, uh, cool option. That, uh, that's on the market right now. And I think the unique design is a big plus. A lot of people don't like it. I've heard a lot of people say they don't like it, but I like it. It's different and I think it works. Uh, and I think this thing actually has some width to it. It looks rugged, um, but I definitely think it's a good option. Um, if you're a Ford person and you like the Maverick, I think the Maverick also has a lot of good qualities to that. Um, but the two look completely different from each other. So definitely cross compare options. If you think they're both pretty good, it's just gonna come down to which one you like better. But Santa Cruz, I think is a great call. If that's the one you want to go with. Hopefully this video will things out and clear for you guys. Thank you for watching this Ben's car review. Please subscribe if not already. If you're new for a future review, drop in the comments and I'll see what I can do. If you'd like to become a member of the channel, I'll have that option. Check that out and join if you'd like and I'll catch you on the next Ben's car review.